The March issue of Down East Magazine is now out and it focuses on, among other things, the best places to live in Maine. This is always a list that gets a lively conversation going. Here to talk about that and other things in the issue, Brian Kevin, Editor-in-Chief. Thanks for coming in. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. We'll talk about the best places to live in a moment, but sure. first I want to touch on one of the other articles in this issue. It's about a couple in Walderboro who are trying to bring Icelandic goats to Maine. Yeah, and if anybody has a passing familiarity with these goats, it may be because apparently they were featured in Game of Thrones in recent <laughs> years and they got some celebrity. But it's a rare breed of goat, the folks who run Beauchemin Farm in Walderboro. Um, they do a number of things there. I've picked berries there before, but they, they specialize in raising sort of rare livestock. And they're trying to bring sort of back a rare species of goats that exist in Iceland, but can't be imported here, but can sort of be bred into life. Um, and, and the article sort of sheds light on how that process works. It yeah. defies easy summary. We won't, we won't <laughs> give a spoiler because the reasoning for why they're going about this in the way that they are is pretty interesting. But it's a fascinating project because if they pull this off, it'll be the only place in the world outside of Iceland where these Icelandic goats that are being bred. these Icelandic goats, which are, which are valuable for, uh, for a number of reasons. I think it sheds an interesting light on, on things that your rural neighbors are doing that are sort of unique in the world that you might not know about here in Maine. We also got Tristan Spinsky, one of my favorite local photographers, to shoot these goats. And as you can see, they're beautiful. I was going to say, I could spend 20 minutes just looking at photos of the Icelandic goats. They're magnificent looking creatures. Yes, cool story. On to the list of best places to live in Maine, which is an annual feature that you have. Have. On the cover, you say the case for Augusta, parentheses, no, seriously, Augusta. No, this is something that, that got people talking <laughs> is to put Augusta, which is taken a lot of flack over the years as one of the best places to live in Maine. There's a line in the story written by my colleague, Ginny Wright, that says, you know, you've probably heard the unflattering nickname. And the unflattering nickname is, of course, Disgusta. And I hate to utter it here on this program uh, because the thing about Augusta is that the, while, you know, this is a city that's had its troubles, like a, like a, like a lot of towns in Maine that have seen economic bases decline and, and, and other issues, um, there's a bit of entrepreneurial zest in downtown Augusta in particular in the last few years. And you can see some of these great photos by Michael D. Wilson of some of the shopkeepers that shows a little bit how this place might might be a paragon of, of, of urban living on par with Portland, but a lot more affordable and with a, maybe a little bit more street cred. A lot more affordable and there are magnificent buildings, beautiful architecture down near the river on Water Street. And as the article points out, they're trying not to just, you know, bring about a resurrection, but create really something entirely new, this whole urban neighborhood. Yeah, a, a place where you can live and work and take advantage of this amazing resource that is the Kennebec River and these fantastic old buildings. You've seen places, uh, you know, uh, the interesting thing about some of the entrepreneurs down there is it tends to be, not entirely, but it tends to be folks who are from the area. It tends to be folks in their 30s that are sort of coming back uh, from someplace else. Maybe they went away for an education or they've come to Portland and decided to come back because of uh, economic opportunity and whatever, and they're building this sort of live work environment where you can get a neat lofted apartment above say a cool brewery or coffee shop overlooking the river and it's like you know 1500 bucks for a cool two-bedroom place a lot of youthful energy it's good to see potential another place on the list one of the great places four seasons in maine rangeley yeah, so, you know, at the time we wrote this story, it, we were sort of up in the air as to whether or not the, you know, Saddleback was going to return. Now, this outfit, Arcteris, has closed the sale of Saddleback at the end of January. Um, the plan is that, you know, Saddleback will be up and running again by December, and everybody hopes that's the case, and we're all pretty excited about it. However, you know, the point of the story was to say, look, this is a pretty cool town with or without Saddleback. And if you are into uh, outdoor recreation of various kinds, like, we hope that that, that mountain is up and running uh, in in the next year but if not if you enjoy fat biking if you enjoy cross-country skiing snowmobiling any number of things uh, and likewise during this time of uncertainty in Rangeley there have been this this crop of entrepreneurs and folks saying we're gonna keep something going here and so Mitch Breton the author talked to a handful of those guys here's a community that would not have been on this list 10 15 years ago Westbrook which is really turning around and I think the common thread of a lot of the folks that made this list this year is that it is places that maybe 10 or 15 years ago, if you'd have picked up this issue, you'd have said, what? I mean, Westbrook has this tremendous resource in the mill, and we're seeing this in a lot of, of Maine mill towns. It's catching some of the Portland overflow. There's a lot of entrepreneurial energy there. It's more affordable than other places in the metro. There's talk of this light rail line, which I think is still like very much in the idea phase, but that would make it a pretty exciting place to live. The Rock Row development, yeah. uh, this giant mixed-use thing, just a lot of energy.
along the same lines, Biddeford. We'll bring up the picture of that quickly. Whoever thought that Biddeford would be one of the buzziest places in the entire state? And our photo director lives in the mill here and also has a studio in the mill and sang its praises. We did a thing where a few of us got to just pipe up and speak up for the towns where we live in, and Biddeford was, was one of them. We and really enjoy doing this feature. A lot of it's aspirational. Yeah. You may not be moving, but yeah. it's fun to dream. Yeah, and we're not, we don't have time to hit every community that no. you have on the best places to live list, but we'll end with one way down east, Eastport. Oh, of course. Uh, as you point out, this is a wonderful combination of quirkiness and inexpensiveness. Yeah, talk about fun to dream. I mean, I love the down east coast, and if you're somebody that fantasizes about living on the coast of Maine, which is like describes an awful lot of people, you know, down east is a place where you can you can really afford to do it, make an impact, and be part of, 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 a, of a sort of up-and-coming back community. Coastal property for less than $200,000. Right? Don't find that in southern Maine. <laughs> oh, you will not. <laughs> it's a really interesting list. It's a fun one to go over, and yeah, you kind of think, hmm, I could see myself in some of those places. Oh, yeah. Brian Kevin, thanks as always. Again, it's the March issue of Down East Magazine, and we've got more information about it on our website in the 207 section. And we'll be back right after this.